track. I basically end up playing a kettle uh, in ch- in time. Is this to on the music. YouTube, Matt? I d- fortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do the rap just for us as we go into this? Come on, Matt Chorley from Times Radio. A hip, a hop, a hip, a hip, a hip, hip hop, and you don't stop a rocking. When you're in the car and you feel like you're in this safe bubble, yeah. you forget that people are just. It, it is glass. People could see you. And you're driving along and you're singing along to a song on your own and you're, you know, you're shaking it out a bit. Virgin Radio, 80s plus. Matt Chorley, hello, welcome to Virgin Radio. This is exciting. And you're here at Virgin Radio 80s Plus, and you yes. come up with the songs. You're one of the most organised guests we've had. We've got the songs, uh, we've got the reasons why. Um, it's because you... I'm so young, Steve, that <laughs> I needed to do some like, historical research. That <laughs> yes. was the... Uh... Have you been on Wikipedia? Yeah, exactly. Scrolling back? Exactly right, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, well, yeah. It's great to have you here. You are, we were just chatting off air a moment ago, uh, probably one of the busiest people <laughs> in uh, the, the hardest working I'm, broadcasters. Hard, hardest working person at Times Radio, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy for you to to spread that around the building. Okay, yeah. we're on a mission together. Yeah, exactly. But, well, as are you, Steve. You're you're on, you know, I can listen to you seven days a week as well. I, hopefully, I'm good, but maybe yeah. I'm just cheap and reliable well, and live down the road. I don't always know. Always better to be that. It is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Now, listen, tell us about your list of songs. They're big tracks, aren't they? Are you an 80s fan? Well, I was, I'm a child of the 80s. I was born in 1982. So, uh, yeah, a lot... Actually, the more I sort of looked into the songs... The more so I think, oh yeah, that really reminds me of a holiday or a party or a, you know the things that were going on in the background in my childhood. Mm. And then there are some which have resonance later on. But yeah, I do. I, being born at the beginning of the eighties, it makes me. I'm just about a millennial, I think. Yes, yeah, nineteen eighty two. And um, so yeah, I do sort of think of myself as being a child of the eighties. And so a lot of these songs. It's why I enjoy listening to. Virgin Radio 80s so much because I just know all the words. Well, this is good. See, this first one is massive. I mean, this is like <laughs> huge blockbusting movie, Sylvester Stallone, Rocky Three. Yeah. So this was basically nice and straightforward. This was number one when I was born. It's Survive and I the Tiger. Number, and so you were born what date? September the 25th, 1982. Okay, that's not a bad number one song no, to have, you know is what, it? You know what, a duff one. You want, like, this is, you put this on, everyone knows the words to all of it. I think it also, it's one of those songs that slightly suffers if you say the title to someone, that either time, oh, you know, it's a bit cheesy, a bit naff or overplayed. When you listen to it, it's an absolute stone cold classic. <laughs> Let's talk about um, Sugar Hill Gang. Now, this is very cool, Matt. Tell well, me more. this is my nod to being cool. So I think. Basically, I think when I learnt the the as everyone does the the opening rap on Rapper's Delight, you basically think you're the coolest person ever. Yeah, the hip hop, hip the hip hip the hop, don't stop the rocking. Now, of course, you can buy it on like Live Laugh Love <laughs> signs that you know people hang in their in their bathrooms, in their bathrooms or, whatever. or in the kitchen or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you have to be mad to work and all that. Um, but uh, it's also just an absolutely. And I, I was quite surprised just how old it was. I thought it was going to be, you know, it was like late nineties. Maybe that's when I first sort of got into it. Started yeah. listening to it. Yeah, I mean, this is so ahead of its time, isn't it? I remember somebody coming on this show, I think it was Mark Moore from S Express, who said when this record came out, it was everywhere. You know, in New York City, there were grandmothers in trainers reciting the lyrics and stuff. You know, it was just one of those pivotal, you know, moments, I think, where where kind of rap music broke through. Yeah, and I think... Actually, the other thing that really struck me, maybe it's part, partly my um, uh, approach to coming up with the list... So many massive, iconic 80s songs are essentially one-hit wonders. Mm-hmm. But it's not, as far as I'm aware, the Sugar Hill Gang did not have a huge back catalogue that the nation knows and loves. No. I'm sure there is. I'm sure it there is are there. other tracks, there but not tracks, like but this nothing one. nothing which has to cut through the Rapper's Delight has. Can you do the rap just for us as we go into this? Come on, Matt Chorley from Times Radio. A hit, a hop, a hit, a hippity, a hip, hip hop, and you don't stop a rocking to the bang, bang, boogie, jump up to the boogie... And the rhythm of the... the, the, the oh, no. I'm taking it. That was excellent. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Very, <laughs> very unkind. OK, let's go on to your next song, You Gave Me Love. Yes. Yeah, so big disco is, anthem, isn't it's it? It's a big disco anthem, this. So this is You Gave Me Love by the Crown Heights Affair. Now, after I had my spell working at the Taunton Times, so I left uh, Sixth Form College, didn't go to university, got a job on my local paper instead. Uh, had a place at university and kept deferring and deferring and in the end I got trained as a local journalist but alongside that I s- started a sketch group with two mates uh, Will and Lewis and uh, it was called Big Day Out uh, one of the reasons I moved to London actually was more to pursue our comedy fame because you're a stand-up comedian as well well yeah this came much later the stand-up yeah, comedy right. but this was in like two th- early 2000s 
And in 2005, you went to Edinburgh, uh, did the Edinburgh Fringe. We did it at a sellout run, uh, had a lot of fun. And then we sort of all drifted off. We got proper jobs and girlfriends and actually spending your every waking hour, you know, writing sketches and spending your weekends arguing who's going to wear the hat in this sketch or that <laughs> sketch suddenly was not quite so pressing. But, um, and I, I think actually it was Will's idea. This was essentially our theme songs, the song we came on to every time we did a, a sketch show. Yeah. Um, and uh, the very first show we went to Edinburgh, the opening was a sort of the big day out opening. It was a sort of waking up. So we came on, imagine three three blokes in dressing gowns uh, with a sort of mug and dancing to this, you know, mug and spoon dancing to this song. And then it, uh, when the, um, I think it's a, is it a jazz flute kicks in on this? Yeah. I, it's and, got it all this track, I basically end up playing a kettle uh, in, ch- in time to the music. Is this on YouTube, music. Matt? I d- fortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this 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 music completely takes me back, particularly to that, that month in Edinburgh um, where we were in a sort of, sort of porter cabin where they'd put the... Um, the, 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 it was a very small venue, sat about 50 or 60 people, but we got four stars in the Scotsman. That was like an oh, absolute, that's really early on. And then we basically sold out. We woke up, we, we basically, every night, we went to bed about three in the morning. We woke up at lunchtime, and then we'd have to get up and go and do some flying. And that at night, when we realised we'd got the four stars in the Scotsman, we went and celebrated in a, in a weather spoon somewhere. And then we phoned in the next day, and they said we'd sold out. And so we knew that that was the difference it had made. So that, that getting that full stars. And this music completely takes me back to this amazing time of just thinking, we're just going to do this forever. Amazing. Are we going to go full on Partridge next? That's the question I've got to ask <laughs> you, because I'd love it if we do, but it's your show, man. I think we are. Uh, um, as long as we get to do Elton John at the end. Okay. Right, fine. It's your show. Yeah, let's go full on Partridge. Partly because I, when I first started doing the Times Radio show, I would do, um, I would tweet what was on the show and, you know, the texting question of the day. And for a while, people would tweet the at Accidental Partridge, which is a Twitter account which shows, you know, it's mainly like Richard Madeley <laughs> doing things, <laughs> yes. which are basically Alan Partridge. Alan Partridge yeah. And whoever it was who kept doing this just stopped in the end because they just realised it wasn't going to stop me doing it. The Accidental Partridge account became less interested in what I was doing. Because I'd be doing, you know, uh, I don't know, Joe Biden's dog apparently has been biting Secret Service agents. Yeah. So the text I did was political dog breeds. And so people text in Matt Hancock, a spaniel, and that sort of thing. <laughs> um, and I, so I don't mind. I am, bre- the bottom line is Alan Partridge is a terrific broadcaster. Oh, he's amazing. Um, and in every way. That's why he's such a, you know, he's been such a long, um, uh, long standing success. Uh, and I don't think there is a better moment in a film than the opening scene of the Alan Partridge movie. Alpha Papa. Alpha Papa. When he's in the car, he's got his driving gloves on, <laughs> he's got his Bluetooth <laughs> ear, you know, headset yeah. in, and he's listening to Roachford. And he's telling someone they've got their fog lights on. Fog lights on. on. <laughs> and what's so funny about it is, because I watched it back before I, when I was coming on, is there's bits of it which are a, they're a bit camp. Like, because he's, as we all do, when you're in the car... And you feel like you're in this safe bubble. Yeah. You forget that people are just... It, it is glass. People can see you. And you're driving along and you're singing along to a song on your own. And, you you know, you're shaking it out a bit. And he's absolutely doing that. And he's trying to tell someone their fog lamps are on. But then he absolutely comes back for the chorus. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. Lovely pick. And we're going to finish with Elton John. Tell me why you want this. Because I'm a massive Elton John fan. Right. Um, and my mate Andrew and I were big mates in secondary school. We've seen him, I don't know if it's three or four times. Um, we, you know, we have... I don't know why we're such weird, nerdy fans of Elton John. So I thought there's got to be an Elton John song in there. Let's be honest, the 80s into the 90s, not rich pickings when it comes to Elton you know, the, like the, the Especially that latter part. Exactly, the yeah. 70s canon. Like, that's, you know, that's the that's where it's the... conveyor belt, wasn't the it? The real uh, meat and potatoes lie. Um, and actually some of his later stuff. So I've got g- very fond memories of singing This Train Don't Stop There Anymore uh, with Andrew and, and others in a state of drink uh, <laughs> late of an evening. Um, and we went to see him. We went to see him. You know, I, th- I saw him on the this tour. So I saw him in Hyde Park last year and at the O2 this year. Yeah. And he was t- still just superb at the songs when he stand up. So I looked through the ones that were available from the 80s and and actually, I guess that's why they call it the blues. Is an amazing song, and uh, at the O2 this year, um, singing along to the the um, 
uh, like Rolling Thunder mm. is so good and the, the, the everyone around you really joining in and it's a reminder actually that I think when people think about Elton John they think you know your song and Tiny Dancer and Crocodile Rock and all those you know big quite brash pop songs if you like this is a really powerful quite moving uh, moving one to finish on Matt, thank you so much. I know how busy you are, and you fitted me in for half Never an hour. Never too busy for Elton John. Uh, 